Few topics have been as hotly debated in Christian circles as alcohol. So what I want to do today is I want to look at what does the Bible actually say? And then ask the question, should Christians drink? Now, I know some of you have a really strong opinion on this topic, and you probably have a really good reason for holding that view. But let's just put our opinions aside for just a few minutes, and let's look at what the Bible actually says. Now, before we dive into that, would you hit that subscribe button so that you can stay up to date on what's coming out on this channel? So let's dive into what the Bible says about alcohol. Now, we're not going to have time to look at every single verse that mentions alcohol because the Bible talks about this topic a lot. If you want an exhaustive list to read through on your own, I've linked to one in the description below. But what I want to do is kind of take an overview and look at some of the key themes, the key verses that mention alcohol in the Bible. So let's start with the Old Testament. Deuteronomy says that wine is a blessing from God and that the absence of wine is a curse from God. But if you flip over to Proverbs, there's several warnings about being led astray by drinking too much. In the New Testament, Ephesians, Galatians, 1 Corinthians, and Titus all warn about drunkenness and not to be filled with the spirit of alcohol, but instead to be filled with the spirit of God. But also in the New Testament, Paul tells Timothy that when his stomach is upset to drink a little wine and Jesus' first miracle was turning water into wine and not just any wine, but choice wine, the best wine. You see, the Bible kind of lives in this gray area. There's no verse that says, thou shalt not drink. And similarly, there's no verse that says, once you've drank this many, you've sinned. The Bible lives in this tension, in this gray area. The Bible never outright forbids drinking alcohol. Rather, it warns of the abuse that can come from drinking too much. Many Christians advocate for the abstinence of alcohol because of the damage that they've seen it do to so many People, but the Bible doesn't condemn the use of alcohol, it condemns the abuse of alcohol. You see, the Bible doesn't say that drinking is a sin. The Bible says that the abuse of alcohol, drinking too much, is a sin. Still, many Christians argue that drinking is a sin and alcohol is something that must be avoided. And the argument that's often given is that alcohol can be abused, which is true. But just because something can be abused doesn't mean it must be avoided. Under that logic, Christians should also avoid money because we might be tempted to place our hope and our trust in money and not in God. But I don't see anybody using that argument. You see, just because alcohol can be abused doesn't mean that it has to be avoided. It means that we should act cautiously. I wanna deal with two common misconceptions that I hear about this topic in the Bible. The first is that alcohol in the Bible had a much lower alcohol content. This argument states that the wine in ancient times, the wine that the Bible was talking about, was really just a slightly fermented grape juice. It was so diluted with water that you couldn't really get drunk on it, and really the only purpose of drinking wine was because the water was so contaminated so that you drank this slightly fermented grape juice so that you wouldn't get sick from the water. Now, it's true that some of the wine probably did have a lower alcohol content when compared to today's modern wine. But we also know from the Bible that there is still plenty of kick in the wine to get you drunk. Otherwise, the Bible wouldn't have warned against getting drunk on wine. But wine isn't the only alcohol that's mentioned in the Bible. The Bible also talks about a strong drink, a fermented barley drink, aka beer. And this rudimentary beer probably contained about 6 to 12% alcohol by volume, which is a relatively strong beer and certainly not in low alcohol content. And again, the Bible doesn't forbid drinking this beer. Rather, it warns against the abuse that can come if we drink too much. And God even encourages the Israelites to buy this strong drink, to buy this beer, to celebrate all that he has done for them. You see, the Bible doesn't support this idea that all the alcohol, the wine and the beer had a lower alcohol content than today's wine and beer. And still, the Bible doesn't forbid it, it just warns against the abuse of it. The second misconception that I hear regularly about drinking is that it hurts your testimony, it hurts your witness. In other words, if a Christian drinks, then people won't want to hear what they have to say. Now, in certain parts of the world, this is true. Drinking can hurt your witness. It can hurt your testimony. But for much of the world and most of the Western world, non-Christians are not going to be put off by drinking. But they will be put off by arbitrary rules that many Christians create. You see, I doubt that my non-Christian friends will be turned away from God if they see me sipping on a beer. 
And actually, it might help my witness if I grab a beer with my neighbor and break down some of the misconceptions about Christianity. Now, of course, we should display moderation. But the point that I'm trying to make is that having a glass of wine or having a beer in moderation is not going to hurt your witness in a lot of countries, specifically Western countries. So can we stop spreading this misconception that drinking will hurt our witness? Yes, we are supposed to be set apart from the world, but we're not set apart by the way we follow rules. We're set apart by the way that we love our God and the way that we love those around us. So should Christians drink? Well, the Bible doesn't really give us a straight answer. And I know for some of you, that's really frustrating. You want to know exactly where that line is. So what each Christian should do is, is prayerfully, with the help of the Holy Spirit, evaluate and figure out for them what's the wisest thing for them to do. You see, for some, they should avoid alcohol because the temptation to become addicted and to abuse it is too great and they should avoid it. But for others, having an occasional beer or glass of wine is totally fine. And we should respect each other's decision, not try to force our choice on somebody else. If you've chosen not to drink, don't judge somebody that chooses to have a glass of wine with their meal. If you've chosen that having a beer with a friend is okay for you, don't try to force your freedom on somebody else. You see, that's what that passage about not causing your brother to stumble is all about. There are certain areas in the Bible that are gray, that are up for us to decide and with wisdom choose what's best for us in our relationship with God. And we shouldn't force that freedom and cause somebody else to stumble, to question their faith. Rather, we should support them in that decision. So let's not add to the Bible and make it harder for people to get to Jesus. Jesus had some pretty stern words for people who did that, and that's not the side of the fence that I want to be on. Instead, let's use wisdom and decide what is best for us and what will help us grow our relationship with God. Thank you for watching. I hope that you learned something. And if you did, would you hit that subscribe button? And then also leave a comment and let me know if you think it's okay for Christians to drink. Look at what does the Bible... Now I guess if you're... Now I guess if you're... Uh... Now I guess if you're witnessing to some...